Today we have just made it through our first winter. In fact, we've we've gone through almost to summer. I've been collecting resources for this particular guide. Um, in this, we're going to be building the perfect house to get through your first winter, and it's actually going to be a pretty much perfect build uh, to get you through and to extend, um, hopefully, for the whole game. And the reason why I think we can do this is I've learned a lot from this building here. It's pretty terrible. So let's get started with the building. Now we will be talking about why you want to build like this as we go through. The first thing that we're going to want to do is get a base layer or a foundation on the go. This can be wood or it can be stone. The reason why we want to use these in the first year is because it gives you medium thermal insulation which is going to be great for keeping you warm uh, in the early game for the first winter versus your scrap metal or your soil so we're going to grab the stone here and we're going to build a 14 by 11 foundation layer this is a lot of resources so you're going to want to use the ones that are nearest to you i've got plenty of stone i've also got um almost a thousand wood which should be good for this uh this build the next thing that we're going to want to do is focus on the outer wall this is going to be wood in my case but you could use stone if you want again we want the outer layer to be the best insulation that we have available. So we're just going to cover all of this. You can see here that I've placed the entrance midway through. So we've got five this side and five this side. So it's dead in the center. Now at this point we have built, we're a little bit into summer unfortunately. We had a uh, toxic ash event which meant they uh, didn't want to spend much time outside. Well the next thing that we need to do is work out where the actual walls are going to be. Now we have two different types of walls that we're going to be using. The first one is the wooden wall, which should be on any exterior surface. So here we have it for the outer section, but also for any of the cold rooms. Now we're going to use two cold rooms for storage uh, for this particular build. So we're going to want to have a cold room along here and it's going to go all the way to here. And we're going to do the same on the opposite side, like so. And it needs to be too wide. And that's because we're going to use this section for all the storage. Now we, we're going to go with four rooms starting off. So we want the first one or first two along here. They're going to be split off in the middle. So the reason that we're using the sticks rather than the wood is because of its awful thermal insulation. This allows um, the temperature to permeate any of the connected rooms, uh, whereas the wooden ones won't allow that much to escape or enter. So we're going to try to keep the cold air out by having the thick wood here, and we're going to try and keep the warm air in by using these sticks here. We're going to have two more bedrooms, one here and one this side, as well as the main room, which is going to be where we have the fireplace and all the cooking that we need. First of all, the wooden wall. I'll talk about why we're going to use this in a moment. Um, we're creating here a little threshold. Uh, we're also going to need to do the same on the opposite side. And now we can build the other two bedrooms. Once again, we're going to be using the sticks. Now these bedrooms want to be four by five. Again, four by five. And then we have our main room. The main room is going to house the fireplace. We don't need to place it now, but we're going to have a fireplace right in the middle. We're going to have some doorways, the wooden ones here, connecting the outside with the main room and also with the storage room directly to the left. And we'll do the same on this side. At this point, we have the entrance. We have the entrance to both cold stores as well as the lounge. 
The reason why we have the threshold is because the warm air here, if connected to a door that leads to the outside or even to a colder room, will bring the temperature of this main room down, which will in turn bring the temperature down of all the connected rooms as well. So by having a little threshold, we're actually creating a bit of dead air, a little bit of um, thermal insulation that way. At this point, I also want to place down some doorways. Now these doorways we're going to leave open uh, for ventilation. We're going to have one either side of the fireplace and we're also going to have one opposite uh, each other over here. But the reason why we're using doorways rather than doors is doors, if we go here, you can see have uh, good heat insulation and we want to keep the warm air in this area. So what we'd rather have is a doorway to allow ventilation between these. Now we can add some windows along here. This is great for keeping it cooler in the summer and also we can shut them in the winter to keep things warmer or also we can have windows on the outer wall here to open up during winter to allow us to chill these rooms. Um, alternatively, if you're advanced enough by that point, you can build freezers or refrigerators. We're going to add the fireplace here. This will be great for autumn and winter. And at this point, we are going to be building a roof over this. And I think we'll bring it over to Yeah, we'll just make it very simple for the time being. And you can see how we are almost there. I've decided to add a little porch area as well, but that's just for artistic choice. We can add some, uh, maybe some more storage here for construction materials. So here we are, we have made it to fall and uh, everything's starting to get stocked up. You may see some of the items here are slightly more advanced. You may not have access to these. Um, don't worry about that, we're a year and a half in. What you want is to get uh, this up and running so you have plenty of space. You may want a second uh, fireplace in the main, uh, the center room. Because it's so large, it's cooler than uh, what a smaller build would be. Uh, so here, for example, we've got 16 degrees centigrade. However, the rooms um, that it's connected to are going to be between eight and 11 degrees difference, generally speaking. The rooms next door, the little thresholds, you're not seeing that much of a difference uh, versus the side rooms, but it does make a difference, especially when it's very cold. I will say that these are big rooms. They're giving us a good amount of happiness as a boost. However, we're only using three. I would recommend using the fourth one as well, but because we have five survivors at the moment, we're still going to be using the room, the building down there. And so I thought it would be rather better to start storing everything in here. Uh, this has got us uh, ready in time for winter. What I would do now if uh, this was my first year, I would be building some defenses around here and then having uh, this as solely a farming and storage area with maybe uh, extending this a little bit further for one or two more rooms. But you will find that this is a great way to keep your um, colonists happy or happier over the winter. It gives you plenty of access to storage uh, as well as your, your excess storage that you'll have over in your base. Um, so there you are guys. I hope you found this useful. I highly recommend using it if you're struggling. Uh, I have done this on hard. So if you're going with a normal save, this is probably gonna be even easier to do. And um, we've managed to do it. We started harvesting the resources uh, at the end of winter and uh, we had it by late summer so you can certainly get this done by winter but there we go guys if you did find this video helpful please do drop a thumbs up and if you want to see more don't forget to subscribe as i will be playing some more stranded alien dawn hey we may even do a let's play if you guys would be interested let me know in the comments below thank you goes to all of our amazing supporters most notably our solo clips patrons cerebral tag james Irwin, and fireflesh as well as our lunars the calamity dixie chris ben and star as well as our blood moon of the day which today is the Salchin husky until next time, 
as always, ciao for now.